I haven't been with banana for a year because of my torn Achilles tendon that I got last year at AFCON. Um, I'm focusing on coming back to play for my team in in the US and then there's a World Cup at the back of my mind. Finally, I'm ready to come and represent South Africa. I come in camp, the first day I get to camp, my mom calls me that uh, my father's son passed away and I thought, okay, I need to go home, but then I can't because um, part of the team, me, Rifilwe, Andile and Jermaine, trying to uh, sort out the issues that we had before the World Cup. We wake up the next morning, my great grandmother passed away. Uh, in less than 24 hours, I tell the manager, I need to go home, I can't do this, you know. They give me some time to be at home. I fly, go to New Zealand. Three days before the World Cup starts, my aunt passes away because of womb cancer. And I say to the manager, listen, you can be strong, but you cannot be this strong. But then I go back to my room, I reflect that it's been a year since I've played. South Africans haven't seen me play in about a year. I'm fit, of course. I don't have much energy, but I want to go home. But I also want to be with my teammates. We worked hard, we sacrificed everything to be here. We fought before we came to the World Cup, and I thought, let me give it a try. Um, we played, played. I think one thing that people didn't know is two days before the match of Italy, I missed training because I had a breakdown and it, it was very difficult, you know. But when I saw my teammates go to training and come back with smiles and I understood what was at stake, qualifying for the round of 16, I got strength from my teammates, the whole team, they prayed for me, they were with me, they supported me. Um, I still wanted to be home, but I couldn't, and I, I drew more strength, and I think most of you could have seen that when I scored that winning goal, I just laid there and I was crying because that's how much it meant for me, because of all the things that I went through in, I say a space of one year because that's when things started for me. And I also want to apologize. I know the media was there when we landed um, and I didn't have so much strength to, to talk to them and I understand the sacrifices that they made to come to the airport, to meet us, to be there, but now I'm acknowledging that I was wrong. Um, but still saying that we appreciate the support that you guys are giving us to making sure that women's sport, even netball, uh, rugby and cricket, everyone is shown to the young girls in South Africa for them to believe and not only just see us on TV but read on newspapers, uh, on social media and everywhere else that there's actually a generation of netballers, a generation of footballers, rugby players that are holding the South African flag high and making sure that we are fighting for women's sports to become successful. Like Bongi said, when we leave, we are hoping that structures will be there. We don't have to fight, we don't have to do anything, but things are naturally there. Imagine a young girl born seven, eight years from now, being South African and having an opportunity to just be a professional netballer, a professional footballer, without having to work hard, without having to do anything, because this generation of netballers and footballers and everyone else fought so hard for those structures to be there. Thank you.